Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the Lasses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, and right now, we are in December 27th, 1964, and I can't actually replay a little bit of yesterday's episode, just because I wanted to make sure I maxed out the State of the Reich and the reforms that we're trying to do. I'm trying to max it out right now, we've got 58.7% regime stability, not too bad. Our social outlook is quite conservative, 19.71 out of 500, and the outlook of progressing is 4.67 every 14 or so days, which isn't too bad. But right now, since we finished up um, Sondagorest, which if you want to read that again, please go right ahead if you really feel like it, we get a special option to do in our decisions. If you would like to reread about the Ahab plan, please go right ahead. So right now, in the comments from the last video, you guys recommended, generally, wait to do the Polish Thorn because we need to get 75% regime stability. We're currently at 58%, so let's wait to do that with the Poles. A couple of you guys recommended that in the comments below. But let's go and charge reactionaries with treason. We may rule the right, but that does not mean we are without opposition. Far from it. The reactionaries have been a consistent thorn in our side since the beginning, dragging their feet the entire way. We need to remind them about who exactly calls the shots in the Reich that they best get with a program or else. Some will see this as excessive, but for the long-term interest of the Reich, it must be done, which we lose 10% regime stability, but after about a month, and we get some uh, weekly stability, we lose some national daddy support, we get 20% regime stability, which seems... Pretty good, so now we have 48%. Uh, there was one comment saying that these vast political promises isn't really worth it. You can. Someone also recommended that we can use this as kind of an emergency if we really, really, really need regime stability in a pinch. But generally, don't choose it because apparently the cost goes up every single time you use this. And uh, yeah, probably not trying to use this. So we'll do the Polish Thorn that we saw yesterday in a little bit. But once we get a little bit more regime stability and right now of course we're still doing so with Hungary and we've got quite a few more comments to go through and we're gonna lose this round it is what it is there's something we can do um uh, so yeah propaganda oh propaganda campaign ended if you like to read about that again please go ahead bread and circuses which we're gonna just go max it out right now and so that was a comment as well go full liberal just go all the way as much as you possibly can so just launch the campaign already totally fine with me Sonda uh, I already read this one the last time if you want to read this please go right ahead a new daddy has teeth when daddy has teeth, he can bite pretty hard. Oh, um, anyways, two to four, one to four, two to three, uh, deploy our agents, why not? It's only map out, right? Cool. Uh, so we'll save this one, and we've got to keep an eye on our regime stability, because we're getting quite close to where we want to be, the bolster opposition. Um, I think I haven't read this one yet. So more reports reaching the Reichskanzlei have illustrated a disturbing trend across the Reich. Many reformist groups have been hanging more posters and distributing the leaflets calling on for the Fuhrer to accelerate his efforts to overhaul the nation. Even more concerning is a variety of groups that advocate for the rights of slaves, for democracy, and even demolishing the whole national daddy estate. While most of these groups are small, disunited in aims, and spread over a vast area, they've all seen a massive boost in organizational activity and resources that have seemed rather sudden and surprising, undoubtedly though. This is the work of a foreign power, using the secret service to fund our opponents to undermine our power and strength. But despite our efforts, we haven't been able to trace the source of the funds and support they're receiving. After all, we still have a right to rebuild. We can deal with some posters and pamphlets for now, but we will have to keep an eye, close eye, on the people. For if too many are swayed and misled, it could spell trouble. Why would anyone listen to a piece of paper on the wall? Because it looks nice and maybe attractive. That's why. Cool. Uh, a couple other comments include, uh, so, well, do fascist spear. Uh, I'm not doing eventually. Like, I'm literally splitting this campaign in two, so we'll go back in time and basically go, I think it's a Dengus Spear, because we're right now going Gang of Four right now. So we will do that. I promise you that. I promise we'll get there. I really want to try out both sides of Spear, and the middle side, that just basically means you lose content and get cooed. We'll try to avoid that and go conservative. Uh, someone says, don't go Gang of Four. We're going to go Gang of Four. Happy 1965 anyways, but we'll go the other route as well. I promise. Just, you got to wait a little bit. Um, someone recommends we repair our stuff. You know, repairing is cool and all, but at the same time... Why repair when you can build new? Sometimes you want to repair, sometimes you want to build new. You just, sometimes it just depends. There we go, good. Token promises, uh, that seems pretty good as well. 15 is not too bad. Uh, wait for that, we'll do, wait for the Polish stuff, because we still need to wait for this stuff as well. Not bad. And what can we do up here? Anything with the Hungarians? Not yet. Uh, someone recommends, so, do the speeches and the other options, just not the one that gives you 10%. So like I said earlier, this is kind of an emergency one. If we need it in a pinch, hopefully we won't really need it, but you never know. The air hard plan. So as you can tell, since we didn't do the Polish thing yet, um, we're going to go focus down here first. So, uh, Truma Truppen. Oh, that's not bad. Wahrungsreform. Wahrungs. Oh, I like that. Oh, get to worsen. Skilled workers will slightly benefit. Inflation control versus price deregulation. Regime stability will decrease. Oh, inflation control, price deregulation. Oh, crap. 
I guess either one doesn't really matter. Reforming business would be nice. 14 hour workday with 12 hour workday. Wait, we get rid of child labor? What? I don't know, man. I might want to wait for that then. Wehrmacht Engineering Schools. It's not bad. Ausbildung Initiative. Well, let's do Trumel Troop since we're rebuilding things anyways. The cornerstone of Hitler's revival of the German economy after the disaster of Weimar was the Reichsarbeitsdienst, the Rad. This was a system wherein ordinary citizens, mostly youths, would volunteer or volunteer for military-style regiments with the sole purpose of carrying out massive public works. Immensely popular and astonishingly successful, the Rad reduced the unemployment rate to nearly zero and instilled proper working-class values in an entire generation of disillusioned and prolificate young men. Erhard, despite his likeness of orthodox national socialist economics, knows a good idea when he sees one. The Rad will live once more, this time, under the new title of Truman Truppen. These new labor divisions will carry out work that would otherwise be allocated to slaves, thereby fulfilling Speer's promise of reducing unemployment, at least in the short term. This is the first step in a gradual move away from forced labor programs, and will be vital for rebuilding the blue-collar job market in the coming years. And we'll do the Schmidt proposal a little bit later on, so I think we'll be okay. Up next, let's see. Ah, uh, more decisions here? Anything more? more? Polish Thorn? We could do so far. Oh, Dezolverein. Oh, crud. I didn't realize this. Grand new project of economic cooperation between the many nations of Europe. Speer, headed by Germany's Gang of Four, seeks to unite the continent under a common single market, ensuring economic cooperation and mutual stability in the process. Uh, show us everything we got. So, money wise, education investment? Oh, this is really cool, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, let's go with that one. Money? Who cares about money? Um, if you want to read about the education investment and stuff like this, please go right ahead. Ooh, we get more civvies. Millies? Infrastructure? I don't, I don't the, not the civvies. Quarterly budget update. Oh. The budget and allotment per nation is updated every quarter, allowing for new investments. Oh, how much money do we have? Total allotment, available budget, out of that much. Total budget. Huh. Definitely increase that stuff. This stuff can get away. Uh, let's, we can save some money. We do we have to spend the entire budget? I'm not really sure if we need to or not, but... Huh. Okay, exploit family ties. We're at three. Oh, that really sucks. We're three? Eh, I guess we'll do that one. This one, we need $50,000 in liquid reserves, which we won't be able to get to, but the air hot plan. Oh. <sighs> What's this? You want to change your price controls? Speer raised a skeptical eyebrow as he glanced at Erhard over the top of his proposal sheet. Erhard shook his head and plucked a fat, fat cigar from between his lips. No, my fear, I'll read it again. I don't want to change them. I want to abolish them. Price controls have never prevented inflation, and the black markets have been sucking the life out of our commercial sector for over ten years now. We aren't going to dig ourselves out of this hole if we keep rejecting sensible free market principles on, well, principle. Speer was silent for a moment. Eyebrows furrowing as he squinted at the tiny text more closely. Erhard shifted in his chair and replaced his cigar, taking a deep, satisfied puff. Suddenly, Speer's eyes stopped flicking back and forth and widened. Reset the Reichsmark. Are you telling me we should withdraw it from circulation? All of it. Then issue new notes and coins. The first batch is ready for the distribution already, and banks in East Prussia and the Rhineland are preparing to start accepting the old currency. It will, let me finish my fear. Give our citizens the purchasing power they've lacked ever since the crash of the 50s, once the OFN embargo ends. Speer looked equal parts intrigued and modified. What do you mean the em Erhard flicked away the stub of his cigar. You are planning to end the embargo, aren't you? Haven't you already spoken with Schmidt about this? Yes, but not... Good. The sooner imports start up again, the sooner we'll see quality of life begin to increase. I assure you, my fear, that you will see progress not a day after the embargo is lifted. Erhard rose to his feet with a groan of exertion and gathered up his papers. Now, I must really be going, my, my big daddy. I have a dozen bankers and five CEOs to meet with before the day's out. With a lazy salute and an almost forgotten hail. Erhard was gone, leaving Speer with a book size proposal and far too many numbers for his liking. Quite the character. How close Reichswehrschaft's minister Erhard is allowing to work to his original plans ultimately affects how effective they are. Emil Schmidt is perhaps even more controversial than his counterpart in the economic ministry, but for very different reasons. Where Erhard is all action, Schmidt is all talk. His foreign minister, that's his job. But talk is considered a dangerous pastime by the NSDAP. Talk might mean sent, something Schmidt has in spades. An outsider to the National Socialist political system, not even Schmidt's time as a soldier in the Second World War makes him trustworthy in the eyes of the party. Luckily for Schmidt, the Führer cares nothing for what the party thinks. The fact is that the Reich's reputation is in the gutter thanks to the past war and the nature of a great nation. Speer's ascendance to the Führership has been welcomed around the world, but we have yet to be properly rehabilitated in the eyes of our fellow nations. Schmidt believes that equally important to the Führer's reforms is a wide-reaching diplomatic offensive to show the world how serious we are about becoming a modern, peaceful nation. All the reforms at home will add up to nothing if we can never again be trusted by the community of nations, which I don't know why I read that one, but if... Well, I'll let you read that again if you want to sometime, but 
Valrum's reforms first, because I want to finish blow through this side of the tree first. The Führer was caught off guard when Erhard suggested it, but his logic is sound. The Reichsmark is a worthless currency with no clout on the global stage. When even Germans who make a decent wage can barely afford to keep food on the table for an entire week. That's to say nothing of the multitude of cars, electronics, and luxury goods, which sit in stores gathering dust because nobody can afford them. Germans have lacked the purchasing power and quality of life enjoyed by the Japanese and Anglos or the Americans for over a decade now. Now, now is the time to put an end to this sorry state. The Reichsmark has do a hard reset. All currency will be withdrawn from circulation and replaced with newly minted coins and notes. All measures necessary to bring the actual value of the Reichsmark from its current inflated level down to the normal will be carried out. There is likely to be widespread confusion and anger following such drastic measures, but the destitute state of our citizenry cannot continue any longer. Cool. It just seems like we have a lot of decisions we can take here. Yeah, I don't know. Just There's a lot of things that are going on at the same time. So, And right now, for this, as a somewhat reformist tick and a conservative pivot, Kiesinger's demands healthcare and education. Oh boy, this sounds very, very expensive. Speer nodded approvingly as he downed the final page of the proposal. A nice fat dose of funding for education, healthcare, and enough to make the Reich look like one of the most progressive nations on earth was sure to go over well with anyone who had half a brain. Well, Herr Kiesinger, he said with an honest smile, this is more like it. It's nice to have a proposal that won't anger at least half the Reichstag come to my desk. Kiesinger chuckled warmly. I'm sure my big daddy, Erhard, Herr Erhard, can be quite an overbearing man at times, can't he? Now, Speer began, steepling his fingers, it will be quite expensive, won't it? Not that I'm opposed to it, just considering the whole picture. Yes, my fear, it will cost us a fair bet, but I'm, I'm sure. It won't be difficult to sell to the Reichstag, though. Many of our newer representatives are populous at heart, and once information about this becomes public, they'll be under immense pressure to accept it. The Führer took a moment to sue it over. The Reich's children certainly needed investment in the futures, and if the money was available to give citizens better quality health care, then why not do it? With the military cuts in the rationalized taxation system, there really wasn't much of an argument against it. The money would just be sitting around gathering dust otherwise, waiting for some greedy bureaucrat to start picking away at it. Very good, Partei Kanzler, uh, Speer finally said. A quick scratch of his pen, and the proposal bore the official signature of the Führer. Delivered with my commendation. You have truly outdone yourself, Herr Kissinger. Excellent. Now, Ausbildung's uh, initiative. Stability is going to go down anyways. Slowly improve. Begin to improve. Benefit, slightly benefit. We're going to go as much as possible. I like this one, but I was building an initiative just because I want to get more industrial expertise as fast as possible. Mercifully, blue-colored jobs did not entirely vanish following the institution of forced labor. There remains a cadre of old workers, those lucky few who avoided conscription during the war and were able to retain their jobs and businesses. Now, Ehad wants to give these men a great opportunity to serve the country and address the great unemployment crisis. He has proposed to the Führer the establishment of a wide-reaching apprenticeship program to produce more skilled laborers. Naturally, this will be approved without question. There are no political angles that could be criticized here in Germany is in dire need of skilled labor. Additionally, this program would be self-sustaining. The more people graduate from apprenticeships, the more mentors there will be for the next generation. we got to think about those who come after us. And what did the AI do? Why did we go down here and did this and not doing spear, spear points on massive bombardments? What? <laughs> but kissing is a man's health care and education. Spear. Had no sooner snatched up his ringing phone than the voice of Reinhard Galen, R&D chief, came blurting out of the speaker amid a burst of static mind fury. I must speak with you, he barked. This bill of Herr Kiesinger is... Speer sighed and pinched the bridge of his nose, feeling a headache coming on already. What about it, Galen? Legislation isn't your business. What are you bothering me for? He sounded indignant, angry even. It is my business when our national security is at stake. We can afford to have our academic base get out of hand. It's spawning ground for Bolshevism, as I'm sure any seasoned intelligence officer could tell you. Need I remind you of the dissident groups that have already emerged from the student movement? Do you want a dozen more appearing every few months? Don't be so hyperbolic, Galen, Speer replied with a roll of his eyes. You want to deny our youth the same education that our rivals enjoy because you're scared it might make your job a little harder? You're going to need a better excuse than that to oppose this. The lion was silent for a moment as Galen composed himself. My fear, he said, voice smoothing and inoffensive it once more. The less a man knows, the more pliable he remains. The world is a dangerous place, too dangerous for us to risk the growth of subversive academia. Bolshevism and its cohorts have always found a home amongst short-sighted young men and women. You must maintain control over our education system at all levels, to secure the compliance of future generations. Think on it, my, my big daddy. What? Go away. Well, we do need pliable youths. Ah, Wahlung's reform. And Ben has been elected. Oh, boy. All right. Oh. Crap. Oh. Hmm. I want to do this one. That's not good. Hmm. I should have realized that. I should have realized that. Okay. Well. 
Well, I guess we'll do this one first. Maybe. Yeah, I guess so. A, a moment of time. How far does this go down? Der Schwerter und der Damocles. Okay, so I, we just have to get through this side anyway, so. Kissing good demands. Health and education. My fear. Spear glanced up from his paperwork, a little surprised. It was unusual for a secretary to say anything more than strictly necessary to him. Yes, Friedman? The young man looked awkward for a moment, as though he'd forgotten how to speak. His mouth opened and closed like a fish for a few times before the words came spilling out. My fear, I just wanted to say thank you. Oh, Speer smiled and went back to revisiting his new speech. Really, you needn't. You were overdue for a pay raise anyways. It's not that, my fear. Speer looked up again, puzzled. I mean, this new legislation of yours, the Reichstag just passed, it means uh, a lot to me, and uh, to a lot of people I know. And uh, people like me who grew up after the war, my wife can't take up her degree again, and my mother doesn't have to choose between medicine and three square meals a day, so um, thank you, my fear. The two men, separated by generations and unbeknownst to uh, Friedman, their politics, they were silent for a moment, then Spia smiled again, sincerely this time. I'm glad to hear it. Making a difference to people like you was precisely the intention. Picking up his pen, Spia resumed his work, but not without one final smile and nod of approval at Friedman as he headed back to his desk, with a little less weight on his heart. It's nice! To be appreciated. Uh, cost goes up, poverty gets better. Public education now is replaced with subsidized higher education, too. And get some more political power, which is nice. And I want to get this one done fast. We got to get 20% more stability so we can actually do those other focuses. Because I really want to get done. I'll spill things initiative. A show trial, literally. The courtroom was filled to the brim. Journalists, cameramen, policemen, and common folk filled the roads left for the public. And it was entirely just justified. Ebert Otto Gill, head of security and the traitor SS faction during the Burger Creek, and directly responsible for hundreds, if not thousands, of summary executions, has been captured less than a week ago while trying to pass the border between Elsass and Oldenstadt. The doors opened. And the crowd roared as Gil was brought to his desk. Some, most likely relatives to some of his victims, tried to breach security to get to him, but the police kept him away. When order returned inside the large room, the trial began. Requested if he had any declaration, the defendant stood, I do not recognize this court. Each and every one of you holds no authority over me. Screams erupted, but he yelled even louder. Don't you see this? This this order, this decadence, Hedrish wanted to bring peace to Germany. A new order, a perfect order. He would have excised corruption like the ones removed... Like, like removing a cancer. Look at you now. You are nothing but a gangrene of the perfect body of Germany. A laugh interrupted his tirade. Amidst his fits, the prosecutor started recording. Thank you for your donation to our cause, came Gio's perfectly audible voice. My wife will surely appreciate this fine necklace, and I can indeed make use of a new car, but how about we talk about more important business? Herr Gil, the prosecutor chimed happily, ending the recording. If you we are a cancer in Germany, it seems like you are far from being healthy. A few seconds passed, and so one from the crowd started laughing, then another joined, and then another, until the entire room was falling apart. The laughs audible from the road outside the courtroom that day, newspapers and TV news, all featured that livid SS as he desperately tried to scream at the crowd to shut up, only to be drowned out by the laughing. The SS disappeared in shame, defeated by a laugh. Ha! Huh. 70%. There we go, my friends. We can do it. Seven and nine. We're not going to get hungry, are we? Because I, I don't. I don't know. I don't really like this great game thing. Because if you need liquid reserves, you just will never have it. I mean, yeah, we're spending extra for stuff for civilian spending, but you're never going to have it. So I guess, I guess it makes sense why we can't have it. It'll probably go to Italy, but still, but still, you know. Uh, so when can we spend more stuff? Oh, good. Finally, Alles Bildungs Initiative. Because we need at least seventy-five percent stability for the other stuff too. So. This will give us about 2.5% more. That's not bad. That's going to hurt us a little bit more, too, but whatever. Um, well, we should be able to do this one, too, because we will have at least 50% stuff there. Ooh, this would be really good. But let's at least spend the regime stability that we currently have, because you never know if we might lose it. Price controls were instituted in the Reich's heyday and as a popular and, at the time, necessary measure. Germany's economy was positively booming at the time. Where was the harm in enforcing a fixed price for bread even the poorest Germans might share in the fruits of our combined labor? Unfortunately, the headlines of victory made us incautious, and we may have forgotten the values of unfixed prices. Ehad now wishes to completely abolish any and all price controls so that the value of goods will operate under the same free market rules as the liberal nations of the world. Hopefully, our citizens will not be too alarmed by the prospect of companies and businesses being able to reset their own prices in time. They will see that basic economics will keep prices at perfectly reasonable levels so that nobody will have to starve again, as during the Weimar Republic. The NSDAP opposes this on principle, and naturally, only the greedy bemoan a fixed price for bread. And now we're at 50, uh, about 60%, that's not too bad. Cool. Alright, and 9, that, uh, that sucks. Turn 2, yeah. Ah, the Schmidt proposal. Helmut Schmidt entered the Führer's office with a slightly timid Heil, and a rather hasty salute. Looking suspiciously out of practice to Speer's eyes, here, then, was a man who had redeemed the Reich on the world stage, an impossible task to many, but not to one as ambitious as Speer. Speer was careful to shake Schmidt's hand, but for the two sat, smiling slightly as he did so. Schmidt, he said warmly, good to finally greet you somewhere more appropriate. The Chancellery meeting rooms weren't nearly secure enough, are they? 
Schmidt nodded and now never see at the implication. Certainly, there were more than just a few men of the party who would ha happily burst in waving a pistol if they knew the extent of what the gang of four was planning. Still, he said nothing, prompting Schmidt to clear his throat and lean forward, looking distinctively businesslike. Now, Schmidt, I understand you have an outline for dealing with our present diplomatic situation. I'm sure you're aware that we're already seeing some positive developments on that front, but Eha believes that we need something concrete to show our good intentions to the world. Yes, my fear, replied Schmidt, quickly composing himself. Ah, a whirlwind tour. As Americans would say, straight to every capital that matters right now. Washington, Rome, Ankara, Ro Tokyo, and so on. I'd undertake this m myself, of course, since I'm an unknown quantity and can make a fresh impression on our old friends. That pact can wait, obviously, in China, too. India, and so th countries like them aren't priorities right now. Is this agreeable, my fear? Schmidt nodded and smiled. Generally this time. Excellent work, Schmidt. We're of two minds, clearly. The fear rose from his seat. The sign that his foreign minister had stamp of approval was dismissed. Let me know when you're planning to depart and make sure you keep myself and the cabinet up to date on your progress. I leave the rest up to you. Best luck, Helmut. Time for diplomatic makeover and science. Research speed, not bad. Reforming business. I like improving poverty, but child labor, man. Less output. I don't know, that's just always a joke to me, child labor. Only Germany's mega corporations, too influential to control, are above national socialist business regulations. In the early days of our regime, when it was necessary to combat capitalist greed, we instituted hard line of co uh, controls on what small and medium sized businesses could do in particular. They were taxed heavily to pay for the warfare and prevent the formation of monopolies. Naturally, we had to have exemptions for the bigger corporations due to their importance in the war economy. Eha disagrees with this interpretation of history. Instead, he claims that Hitler couldn't have managed a Do Bund Deutsche Mädel biscuit sale and should have stuck to speeches. He wishes to scrap legislation imposing harsh terms on entrepreneurial efforts along with high taxes on businesses. He insists that this is a norm for the rest of the world, even fellow fascist powers, and we cannot hope to be competitive without such modernizing reforms. Very good. And we have one day left, and then we'll have something new here, and then revitalizing science. To finish the first wave of economic reforms, there is nothing more practical and certain to appease the Wehrmacht than investment in a long, ailing R&D. Institutes like Kaiser Wilhelm Gesellschaft and the Fra Fraunhofer Institute were once at the forefront of global science and engineering. Nowadays, the world lasted German efforts to catch up with Japan and the US. Even Italy has surpassed us in some fields. This revitalization of what once was Hitler's pride and joy is long overdue. How can we ever hope to reclaim our position as the world's leading power if we fail to even make the efforts to modernize? Equally limiting to our progress is NSDAP's ideological stranglehold on science. Ever since the decision was made to reject Jewish physics in the 30s, we've been put out of step with the rest of the world. Every scientific discovery and advancement in engineering over the past few decades has had the sole purpose of advancing the party's ideological control of the Reich in an unacceptable state of affairs in this day and age. It's past time the Deutsche Physik was dumped into the grave where it belongs. One... Are you kidding me? Nine? Already? Smug in. Smuggle in radical guns. Uh, there was another comment from yesterday I didn't address yet, such as, uh, get rid of the, I uh, maybe I already said it, delete the Civil War volunteers and student divisions. I kind of already did that, so. Yeah, get more regime stability was another one. Do the Reichsminister's plan for Poland. We'll do that one too. That's why we're waiting for 75% stability. These are all infantry and motorized. All infantry and mountaineers. Um, uh, this looks pretty normal. We even have some Marines for some reason, and some more guys here too. So not too bad overall. Not too bad. Good. Good. 51%. That's good. <sighs> Very good. Hopefully we will do well in this campaign. I'm just hoping we do well, man. I really hope we'll do well. Nothing yet here. We could spend more, but we're okay for now. Uh, oh, and we're out five. We want at least ten. Oh, five more. Oh, man. I think it's better to go big than go home. Big and then go small. So... Two to four. Oh, let's do this one. Why not? Cool. Oh, whoops. I already met past so many days. My bad. Whatever. That is what it is. No exceptions. Holy crap! Seven. We, how do we even get 75%? Oh, a gentle approach. Uh, that's not good. Um, we don't have that one yet. That's, that's really hard to get. That's really difficult to get. How are we supposed to get that? Well, I guess we'll have to wait then, because all these other reforms just cost so much. So, beyond the Atlantic? Let's do neighbors at home first. The Reich's reputation in Europe is arguably even worse than it globally. Two world wars in the first half of the century were enough to paint us as a warmongering aggressor with no regard for our neighbors. Add to that the deepening distaste for fascism across Europe, and the fact that we drag down everyone else's economies along with our own, and Germany finds itself the most loathed nation in European history. Our future success begins at home, and our neighbors must learn to trust us again before we can begin to improve our domestic situation. Schmidt believes that any European not under our rule is worth investing into. 
the former triumvirate nations are particularly important, of course, but Sweden and Finland will also be key partners of our future endeavors. As, some, as part of the stage of his plan, Schmidt also wishes to make a detour to India. Though not yet a superpower or nor hostile to us, India is one of the world's largest nations, representing enormous trade and investment opportunities. India is likely to become a major player in the world affairs. Within a few decades, reaching out to them couldn't hurt. 49%. That's just not good enough. I'll do more things up here. Okay, so we're not... Mm, we're at nine? Are you kidding me? So basically, what happens if we tie? Best of five wins. The higher value wins. It's a draw. What happens if we... If no one gets hungry, then they, they go isolate and go home. Ooh. 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 Basically, either they draw, go home, or Italy wins. It's safer to play it. But I say go big, go home. We're probably going to lose hungry. Let's be real. We're going to lose hungry. Screw it. We're doing it. I got to remember to press enter sometimes. In the land of the rising sun. The Reich and the Empire of Japan once fought side by side against the plutocratic superpowers of Britain and America, but relations since the bombing of Pearl Harbor have been icy at best. Japan's intense paranoia and claims of pan Asianism drove a permanent wedge between us, the once common cause of the tripartite ah, pact was no longer a factor. Regardless of the vast distance between our respective spheres of influence, Japan seems set on having Germany as a permanent rival, no different to the US. Still, the Fuhrer is insistent on a policy of universal detente, which means Japan must be given a place in our diplomatic plans. Neither Speer nor Schmidt are optimistic of normalizing relations with Japan, but if such a mission were to succeed, we might ease attention somewhat and redirect it towards the US. As one of the world's largest economies, we have much to gain from reopening trade with the co-prosperity sphere. Should true detente be achieved, we might even see an old alliance reborn beyond the Atlantic. Far to the west lies our fiercest adversary, the US of A, regardless of the fact that we extracted or exacted no brutality or brutally harsh terms against them upon their capitulation. They hold us responsible for the sorry state of their nation. The fact that we employed a nuclear weapon against them, uh, they strenuously object to our colonialism and the continuation of national socialist rule. No matter what their own domestic situation may look like, the opinion of and the US influences the entire OFN as well as a number of neutral nations. We must achieve detente with our old foe to normalize relations with the free world. Schmidt has often expressed his desire to see America American person. Now we will have the opportunity. Securing good relations with the U.S. will not only be a crucial first step in painting a new international image of the Reich, it will also open up trade that both our nations desperately need. German industry needs foreign investment, and our people will benefit from greater choice in their purchases. Neighbors at home. Helmut Schmidt's diplomatic adventures continue, with visits to Rome, Ankara, Madrid, Stockholm, and Helsinki. The Reich's image has suffered immensely in Europe, not merely because of the war, but also due to the economic draft that killed much of the continent's economy and plunged our trading partners into depression. The ready visi visibility of the Burger Creek and the less admirable aspects of Hitler's reign has made us a harsh pariah, or a pariah nonetheless, despite the, being the unquestioned ruler of northern and eastern Europe. Schmidt could never hope to repair our image in a single trip, but the first step towards a long-needed thaw in relations have finally been taken, something Hitler would have never dined to attempt. No doubt many of our neighbors question whether this move towards openness and cordiality is genuine. Such a lack of trust is unfortunate, but more than understandable, as our Führers put it to the Reichstag. Still, the importance of this diplomatic defensive operation cannot be understated. We have been isolated for decades, feared and loathed as an evil empire of the North, like something out of a fantasy novel. Hopefully, Europe will begin to recognize our good intentions in a time as well overlook anything they don't like about us in the name of a real politik. They will learn in time. This is going to be impossible to do. Oh, boy. Come on, 33%. 33... Ah, we... Whoa, we both went over! We both went over! Okay, so we still in the game. We can still make sure that Hungary doesn't go to the Italians. Ah, yeah, the friend of your. Okay, we can't do all this stuff. I don't like this. I want to do this one. Oh, wait. That's going to cost us stability. This is going to cost us stability anyways. So, yeah. The, anyway, anyway. And someone did say we should do Friends of Yore. But I'm going to try to do that one uh, when we do uh, the more conservative route. So, we won't do Enemy My Enemy. So, that'll be good. So, this will actually increase. Well... Costing us 2.5% of regime stability, so basically it doesn't cost us anything, so enemy my enemy. So the saying goes, at least, Japan is certainly a military and economic juggernaut, but it's also xenophobic, isolationist, and paranoid in the extreme. They never regard us as equals as much due to the so-called pan-Asianism as to our contrived rivalry. We will continue pursuing a thaw in relations, but it's clear that trying to rebuild our old ties with the Japanese is a complete waste of time. No matter, the Wehrmacht is all Germany needs to defend herself. We will be better off without an arrogant, far-flung ally dragging us down with them. In line with Schmidt's resounding 
sound re reasoning. The U.S. will be our main focus in diplomacy. Perhaps this is for the best, as we have far more in common with them than the Japanese. They might still be corrupt plutocrats, but the Americans are still European at heart, with plenty of honest German heritage. If we can smooth over the ongoing tensions in Africa and start exchanging goods again, perhaps the geopolitical tables can be turned on Japan. It would not be incons it would not inconvenience us to see their exploitative empire fall and the free nations emerge from ruin. In the land of the rising sun, the Japanese never. Uh, have never disguised their distrust and even outright loathing for us in the past decades. Our alliance in the tripartite pact was born out of little more than convenience and deterrence against the U.S., which became moot once the Japanese declared war on them and Hitler dragged us into it. As a rival fascist power, the Japanese naturally see us as a threat and a challenge to the rule, never mind the fact that their sphere of influence is barely overlap at all. Our recently friendly overtures towards their arch enemy may actually have made this enmity worse. Still, Schmidt has a job to do and performed it admirably given the circumstances. Welcome to the die by the Prime Minister, though snubbed by the Emperor. He made an impassioned speech calling for an end to census rivalry for the Japanese to recognize our goodwill and peaceful intentions towards the Empire of Japan. He was met with polite and somewhat muted applause, to be expected, of course, but at least he wasn't given the silent treatment. The Fuhrer remained skeptical that relations with the Japanese will ever be normalized, but this was a necessary step in, to take in our journey towards a positive image on the world stage. If we cannot be seen as willing to reconcile with even our most vicious rival, we will never be trusted as a global actor. That could have gone worse. Hold on a speech, good? Yes, please, yes, please, yes, for the love of God, yes. Um, I'm not sure how much regime stability we need for this. A model colony for uh, Austin. New options are available in the focus tree. Available focus tree. It seems like the model colony we might be able to do. So the so-called model colony of the Reich, once a bastion of strength and loyalty, has been ravaged by internecine warfare and chaos to ensure stability in their territories. We will shift our eyes eastwards and deal with the Reich's commissariat at Austin. You probably do okay with that. Jekyll and Awesome. Few names provoke such strong reactions in Germany as a name Schutzstaffel. Most react with hate, some with fear, and others with disgust. No matter who you ask, however, you're almost guaranteed, oh crap, to hear a tale of their brutality. One of the most widely reviled organizations in German history. The hope was that with their defeat and the Bürger Krieg, they would be permanently banished to Burgundy to rot. Unfortunately, this is not the case. Elements of the Ausland SS, oh, we go to war with them, led by Friedrich Jekyll, have managed to seize control over Ausland and are ruling with an iron fist. Their maniacally Id maniacal ideology must be put down with extreme prejudice, effective immediately. On the political front, this development has aided the reformist wing of the party immeasurably, seeing as if they've made numerous successful comparisons between the conservative wing of the party and the SS in any case. The intervention must happen, and it must happen soon, or there may be no Ausland to return to. How does this keep happening? That's really not good. I was not expecting that. So, okay, this is really not good for us. Maybe I should have waited for this one. Yeah, I should have waited for this one. My bad. My fault. And we should do really well against them just to get our guys on the border. That's going to cost us even more stability. Oh my gosh, this is impossible. Beyond the Atlantic. History was made today. As a president of the U.S. of A., welcome to German dignitary to the White House. Our foreign minister, Helmut Schmidt, was not received warmly as a representative of an OFN nation might have been, but the fact that there was no passive hostility on the president's part surely is a good sign. Schmidt was all smiles, no doubt a strange sight to many Americans after decades of hostile relations between our two countries. The real coup Schmidt scored during his visit was an address to the Senate, and initial fears on our part were quickly allayed when a recording was delivered to Germany for broadcast on state TV. He began with, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your most cordial reception and kind words of greeting. A standard diplomatic opening, but Schmidt's warmth of voice and character made clear his sincerity, he went on to say. This is my first expedition as foreign minister of the Greater German Reich, and I must express my admiration for the authority and dignity that this great nation has displayed in every action and every hour of its existence. Schmidt's schedule did not permit a tour of major cities as he initially requested before setting out, but the Führer was doubtful that such a request would be granted by the Americans anyways. Considering we nuked them only 20 years ago, Schmidt's visit has been a resounding success and a great diplomatic victory for the Reich. This is sucks. Oh, this, this is going to be so bad. That's a lot of regime stability. Holy bad words. Just bad words, man. I I might just, you know, by the next episode, I might consider just, like, doing this again and not selecting that button. We'll see. Yeah, we can do that stuff, too. Um, civilian investment. Absolutely. Hide special projects? No. Um, so if we don't spend money, do we just save it, maybe? Because I don't want to do that stuff. Set that yeah, do these two. That'll be good for now. Uh, we're pretty much good to go, yeah, pretty much. Oh, my God. Ah, oh, 37%. Oh, that's... We might have to do this one just for an emergency or something. Oh. And so now we're 37% is still 37%, so... We are not alone. This is no ordinary day in politics for Speer. It began with a most unusual morning. Reinhard Galen, a spymaster extraordinaire and former head of foreign armies east, was at the Reich Chancellery even before Speer himself. An urgent matter he set as he barged his way past the Fuhrer to lay down his lay out his papers on Hitler's old desk. Though calm and collected as ever, there was no mistaking his tone, we've got problems. Yeah, we do. Oh my goodness. Why can't we be more conservative right now? Or, not conservative, I mean reformist. So, oh, they're dead. Okay, that's good. Do we actually, that would be cool if we got some more st 
Do you want to join the war? Okay. Um, so right now we're at this tick. That's a conservative tick. Regime alignment. That's kind of a conservative tick. Why does a conservative tick? Huh. All right then. I'm waiting for this one mostly. Uh, let's come back to Poland. You never know. And I don't trust Burgundy. Well, they're back. Nice flag. Zebel. We are not alone. 36%. Jesus Christ. Weekly stability gain modifier. It's nice. It's not enough, though. It's just not enough. <clears throat> but, oh, warning. Increase, increase, increase. It's probably going to plummet. Warnings with him. Gideon's provided us with a list, a long one, and just the first of many. It wasn't surprising, of course, with the NSDAP still packed to the girls with conservatives and militarists, and even with a few SS sympathizers. What was surprising was their revelation of their boldness. Party men are, with a few exceptions, infamous for the cowardice and lack of imagination. This has been the case ever since we first took power and no longer had to worry about the electorate. We can largely pin this on the fact that the party now exists solely to fill the rubber stamping legislature that is the Reichstag, and is a career letter for ambitious young bureaucrats. At least this list is more beneficial than concerning. The NSDAP has so far escaped through thorough scrutiny, and the Sondergoresh, compared to the bureaucrats, time to root the weeds from a garden. It would be too drastic and unpopular to simply purge the entire party, but with concrete evidence of a certain individual's plans, who will question the removal of a few problematic elements? Everything's costing so much. Enemy of my enemy. Oh, the proper campaign ended. Well, Bread and Circuses. Oh, let's do it again immediately. Immediately. Go! Because we're trying to get over here. The U.S., Speer finally said, opening his eyes and setting his hands down on his desk. Oh, you are right on this, Count Schmidt. We need economic clout on our side. Schmidt breathed the sigh of relief and nodded. Thank you, mein Führer. I promise you, this is the right path. They're, well, they're normal. Speer chewed his lip, looking a little bit skeptical. Hmm, true, but they won't stop trying to subvert our interests. Don't forget that we've been on hostile terms for decades now, and that history won't go away with just because you enjoyed some applause while you were over there. I know, Daddy, Schmidt replied with a slightly offended edge to his voice, but they also operate in a manner we're more f than familiar with, and our two societies are more alike than they are different. The Japanese, though, trying to build normal relations with them, even if it's not totally futile, might just make them more confident in their own broken system. Can you imagine if we got dragged into another war because of them? If you ask me, we should keep them at arm's length, my Daddy. Schmidt nodded and scratched his chin. Yes, I understand, but still, the Japanese still match the Americans in the military might. Isn't there some value in a deterrent? Deterrent, mein Führer. Forgive my frankness, but we already have a deterrent. It's called our nuclear arsenal. Conventional armies don't have the clout they used to. Trust me, Erhard is right. The economic benefit of trade with the U.S. will far outweigh anything the Japanese can offer, and we can't be seen to associate with the Japanese if they can take a turn to towards aggression again. I already have made the decision, Schmidt. Speer remarked, relaxing a little. Don't fret. Tell your men at the foreign office to get to work and contact Erhard too. We still have a long way to go before we start seeing forwards on the Autobahn. Two eagles shall fly together in the black market headache. Oh, look at this. Not We're at nine?! The police reports are becoming increasingly disconcerting and worrying. Investigations into the black market that is keeping ordinary Germans fed and clothed but also questioning national socialism is now uncovering something more drastic. Oh boy. Oh crap. A new batch of pamphlets and short books are appearing calling for drastic reforms to the Reich. Some include those that Speer's advisors, supporters, and supporters have called for that a majority of the nation is at best lukewarm too. But some of the pamphlets are calling for such crazy ideas as such as a free multi-candidate elections and even reducing the fear's power. There's no doubt that some foreign power is behind this. Most likely the Americans with their silly ideas of democracy. Or perhaps the Japanese are Italians trying to take advantage of our weakened state. However, the Reich is in little position to actually combat this growing tide of foreign-backed destabilization, so all we can do is manage it, and hope our reform efforts will convince the ordinary Germans that we know what we're doing. The people will never believe this. Mm. Oh my god! <laughs> That's not good! Um, yeah, I might go back. We'll see what happens, though. We'll see what happens. So, we'll see what happens once we select warnings with uh, within. A helping hand. Of course, Galen would not be so forthright and helpful without the expectation of a new reward. Quite unlike the NSDAP's toadies, however, he has made a bold, unexpected, and altogether useful request. The formation of an entirely new intelligence agency under his direct authority. There are serious questions about his motives, but Galen has always been the very model of a consummate. Professional. Consummate. Professional. Motivated by patriotism and a borderline obsessive desire to keep the Reich's backroom affairs in order. He is one of our most successful intelligence operatives. Might this be what we need after all? Dubbed Reichsnachtrichtendienst, the Reich Intelligence Service, or R&D. 
This proposed agency would consolidate our existing intelligence services under a single umbrella. All foreign intelligence gathering activities would be the R&D's responsibility alone, and they would also take over all high-level internal security. Lower-level Gestapo roles will be folded into the Oropo, and the Abwehr will effectively become the R&D's military division. This would be a considerable accumulation of power in Galen's hands, but would give us a clean break from the Hitler-era agencies, and bring us to up to par with our international rivals in the field of espionage. Which, luckily, right now... <clears throat> We are at 36%. This is not great, but we're doing the best we can. We are not alone, though. Reinhard Galen was not an impressive man to behold. Thin-faced, with prominent ears, he was not the sort of fellow one would expect to hold a tremendously successful record as former head of the Foreign Armies East, a military intelligence unit active during the war against the Soviets. Nor could he be counted as a particularly dedicated ideologue. What he was, however, was loyal, ruthless, and utterly dedicated to his nation, having continued his own intelligence operations against the Bolsheviks even after their defeat. In Speer's estimation, he was not only brilliant, but also a true German patriot, which is why he had been invited to the lofty halls of power to discuss a certain proposal of his. Speer relaxed a little, sensing nothing but respectful deference from the neatly dressed man with his quaint bowler hat, so Herr Galen. He says, steepling his fingers, I understand that on top of all this information you've brought me, you have an idea for how to deal with the matter of internal security. Please, speak your mind. Galen hesitated for a moment before visibly relaxing and leaning onto the desk, my Führer. It is no secret in intelligence circles that you are seeking to reign in the Gestapo and Abwehr, and if I may be so bold, they are indeed in poor shape. They could neither prevent the civil war nor reign in the dissident factions within the Reich. Speer's face remained inscrutable. Go on. After the war, the Americans changed tact. Their wartime organization, this OSS, became the foundation of the CIA. They drastically or learned from their mistakes, adjust accordingly, and now they are drastically outpacing us in the field of intelligence. The same goes for the Japanese as well as for every secondary power in the world. We need something else, a new intelligence agency for the modern era. Should be a pawn to this for a moment. Interesting idea. Do you have anything more concrete for me? Galen nodded. He hauled his briefcase up under the desk and clicked it open, producing an overstuffed manila envelope with a Reichnox Reichdendienst scrawled on the front. I do indeed, my fear. Would you like to know more? How long has he been planning this? Long enough. God, I think I made a mistake by doing the whole Austin thing. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like Austin with us, but still. Observations outside. Or observations of outside. Anyone can watch the news and see what's going on in the wider world, but the Gestapo and Abwehr have been consistently outwitted by their foreign opponents for decades. During the Second World War, espionage was one of the few areas that the Allies were always able to beat us in. Galen, strangely enough, appears to have been working on this matter of his own accord, even before the end of the war. He informs us that Russia has drastically changed beyond, or changed in the years since the Russian war, beyond the borders of the RK Muscovy. The former Soviet Union has given way to a multitude of warlords and splinter states, all vying for supremacy over the ruins of Russia. Galen's agents have informed him of widespread plans for reunification by the desperate rulers of the Ural, Siberia, and Central Asia. That's not all either. Galen has provided a literal pile of information on the world's most troubled regions, from our own possessions in Europe and Africa to the far-flung China, slowly rebuilding Japan's shadow. The world, according to Galen, is certainly more interesting than we had previously thought. So I think with this thing, I think ultimately I'll probably go back and not do the awesome thing, so we can go back and do, hopefully, no exceptions. I kind of doubt we can get up there. I really want to get that one done. And I think as someone said in the comments, like, doing all this stuff can wait, maybe? So we might not have to do it immediately, even though it would be better to do it now rather than later. And we still can't do any of this stuff because we it just takes so long to read through all this stuff. Which is fine with me, but still. The Reichsnachrichtendienst. Galen has, in a very short period of time, proven his worth beyond doubt. The Fuhrer, wishing to consolidate all his intelligence agencies into a single organization under central supervision, has thus decreed that his most gifted and helpful patriot will have his wish granted. Henceforth, the Reich's ever-vigilant guardian will not be the outmodeled Abwehr or the politically unreliable Gestapo, but the Reichsnachrichtendienst. Galen will obviously have to report to the Fuhrer regularly, but will be beholden to him alone. Galen will also have carte blanche to shape and organize r and as he sees fit, though the finalized plan for it will need to be run by the Fuhrer for final approval. This marks a new brighter day for the Reich's security and an appropriate dark one for our enemies. Even the SS will come to fear our new hidden blades, striking out their insidious tendrils from the shadows. Good, good, good. How's the budget looking? Not bad. How's this looking? We're at nine. Hey, we're going to win one, everyone. We're going to win one. Ah. Oh. Oh, that's good. Promote national daddyism. I'd love to do that, but let's win. I'd like to win once. And let's one next, because we can. Great. Three more days for horizontal stuff. And how is this looking? 21 billion? Oh, that hurts me internally. So badly. Oh, my goodness. Holy cow. And then you guys are good. Beautiful. And we can grab some radar, because we can, because why not? Oh, man. 
I don't want to have to wait. If, once we get this one done, I want to read the event what this is. So, a gentle approach. Because we did do both of these. We're not, made no exceptions. Oh, uh, now do we have, oh, oh, Reknak Reknsdienst. Um, well, at least that looks pretty good. Even if we didn't do it, we still would not have enough things up here. 10%, so it'll be 47%. We can boost it up to 57%. I just don't think we can do this one. I really want to do this one. Ah, uh, I, uh, why does it have to discard everything? Uh, I don't want to do this one, but Erhard is an intelligent man with good intentions. But he can be a little overzealous at times. He insists on going full steam ahead at all times, trampling long-standing laws and regulations in the name of progress, a fear. As aware of the wisdom in Erhard's reforms, but it remains deeply concerned about the public relations impact that they will have. Monetary reforms are especially problematic as the public in general has no knowledge of economics and doesn't understand why we need to render their savings worthless. The fear wishes to restrain Erhard somewhat. It would never stop him from pursuing well-thought-out measured reforms, but there's so many radical changes happening in such a short period of time. Combined with the recent civil war and the change in leadership, might this all prove too much for the people of Germany? Best to err on the side of caution and hate the more conservative Speerites. Remember, reform, not revolution. I want to do I want to do this one so badly, I'll be honest. Like, I, I don't know. Have you, when, have you, when have you guys tried this? Have you been able to get up th that much more stability? I just don't know. Should we do, maybe, would it be better to do Fortress Up North first? I... Uh, how do we get more stability? I mean, I guess it's easier probably playing as conservative because we're all the way up here and trying to get reforms is not easy. So, oh man, I'm not really sure what to do. I really don't want to do that one, but we might have to be forced to do it. But I might also go back and try to do, uh, not do Austin yet. So, I think we'll end it here for today. So, let's choose that anyways for now. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we're going to try our best to get as many reforms as possible. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.